All right, guys, in this video, let's implement the three steps to use a service in Angular. Let's begin with step one, creating the employee service. Now to generate a basic service template, we use Angular CLI. So in the integrated terminal, within the project folder, run the command ng g for generate, s for service, and followed by name of the service. In our case, it is the employee service. When the command completes, you should have a new file in the source folder, employee.service.ts. And if you take a look inside, you have the basic template for an Angular service. Now what is our service responsible for? To provide the employee data. So in the employee service class, let's create a new method, get employees. And we just return the array of employees. And in the list and detail components, initialize the employees array to an empty array. Empty array in the list component, empty array in the detail component. So the service now has a method that returns the employees. Our first step is complete. We have created our service. The second step is to register the service with Angular's injector. If we don't register, the service will be just another regular class according to Angular. Now there are multiple places where you can register the service, but the place you register is important because Angular has a hierarchical dependency injection system. So consider the example application. It has app module, the app module has app component. The app component has two components nested inside, employee list and employee detail. Here is how Angular's DI system will work. If you register in the employee list component, the service can be used by the employee list component and its children. No other components, not even the employee detail component can use it. So this is not a good choice. Now, if you register with the app component, the app component and all its children can make use of the service. This works fine, but each module is usually a feature area in your application and might grow. So it is better if you register the service at the module level. By doing so, components under the app module can use it. And to register a service, we use the provider's metadata. So let's go back to Visual Studio Code. In the app module, include employee service in the provider's array. Also, make sure to import employee service. So our second step is now complete. We have registered our service with Angular's injector using the provider's metadata. The third step is to mention the dependency for this service in the component that needs it. And if you remember from the last video, the dependency is specified in the constructor. So let's go back to employee list component. In the constructor, I'm going to use TypeScript's shorthand syntax to make use of the dependency. So in the constructor, private underscore employee service of type employee service. And we also need to import it. So now we have a local variable underscore employee service that gives us an instance of the employee service. Next, we need to make use of the service instance and fetch the employee data. And the code for that goes inside the ng on init lifecycle hook. We haven't talked about lifecycle hooks, but the ng on init hook gets called once the component has been initialized. So inside the on init method, this dot employees is going to be equal to this dot employee service dot get employees. So here is how this works. We have the employee service class. Employee service class has a get employees method that returns the employee data. 
So in our employee list component, we get hold of an instance of employee service, which is underscore employee service, and call get employees method and assign the returned data to the employees array that belongs to the employee list component. Now let me do the exact same thing in the employee details component. Private employee service of type employee service and then in the ng on init method this dot employees is equal to this dot employee service dot get employees. So now if we save this and restart our application so npm start take a look at the browser and we still have the list and details displayed but this time we are doing it much more efficiently. Of course we might have different views to display the list and details and also make use of routing to switch between the views but I wanted to focus solely on how to use a service and this is how you do it. Create a service register it with the injector and declare it as a dependency in the component that wants to use it. All right, one last topic of discussion is about the injectable decorator. This right here, why is it required? Well, injectable decorator tells Angular that this service might itself have injected dependencies. So if you ever want to inject a service into another service, injectable decorator is a must. Right now, the employee service doesn't have dependencies. So the injectable decorator is not necessary. But the employee service might have dependencies in the future. And that is why it is recommended to add this injectable decorator as soon as you create a service class. And since Angular CLI follows best practices, it adds the injectable decorator when you generate a new service. Now you might ask, so how come we don't use the decorator on the employee list or employee detail component? We don't see an injectable decorator here, right? And the class still makes use of the employee service. Well, that is because components have the component decorator that lets Angular know, hey, I might have dependencies and might make use of the dependency injection system. But for a service, we don't have that component decorator. If we remove the injectable decorator as well, it becomes a plain TypeScript class, nothing to do with Angular. And that is why injectable is required only for a service and not a component. All right, that is what I wanted to cover about services. Let's take a look at HTTP and observables in the next video. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.